welcome to the Church of the Redeemers Weekly Podcast. We pray that you will enjoy this week's service, and we hope that you will follow us at www.cotrb.org, and may God continue to bless you. I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I said he is worthy to be praised. Let me start again. I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I said he is worthy. Oh, he's worthy. On this resurrection Sunday morning, he's worthy. Worthy. Oh, oh, you don't sound like you love him. You don't sound like you want to thank him for dying and getting up early on Sunday morning. Oh, he brought us for a mighty long ways. He brought us from a mighty long ways, from slave ships to spaceships. He brought us from a mighty long ways, from cotton fields to corporate boardrooms. He brought us from a mighty long ways, from the outhouse to the White House. He brought us from a mighty long ways. Oh, come on and praise him. To the ministers on the rostrum, to Digger Nix, and to all the officers and members of Church of the Redeemer Baptist, uh, to my lovely wife of uh, 58 years, uh, seven months, uh, and one day. All right. I'm delighted to be here this morning. I'm going to ask you if you would take your Bibles, turn to your Bibles to uh, St. Matthew chapter 28, starting with verse number 11 and ending with verse number 15. Matthew chapter 28. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went to the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will all satisfy it and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews. I want to talk about you cannot cover up the truth. Jesus arose from the dead. You cannot cover up the truth. Jesus got up from the gave the grave. Let's pray. Oh, gracious and wise God, thank you for this Resurrection Sunday morning. 
Thank you, Lord, that all those are gathered here to celebrate your coming out of the grave with all power in your hand. So, Lord, we thank you for this day that we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Lord, I cannot preach your word unless you anoint me. So send your anointing, Lord. Send your anointing. In Jesus' name, who is the Christ, amen. You can't cover up the truth. Jesus got up from the grave. In our lifetime, we've seen some cover-ups. Uh, some would remember the Watergate cover-up in the 1970s, which rocked this nation and created a crisis of credibility in government. Some will remember a infidelity cover-up by a popular president and his even worse public flogging by Kenneth Starr at the expense of all of us. Some remember those, especially those who, who sacrifice a son or daughter, we said the worst cover-up was the lies that were fed to Congress and the American people about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that triggered a war that we can neither justify nor explain. This past Thursday, the full Mueller report was released. And although the jury is still out, there are major questions as to whether or not there are things that President Trump did and cover up. And cover. And almost daily, there are questions raised about elected officials and appointed officials engaging in activities and then covering them up. In recent years, in recent years, right here in this city, uh, we have had a number of noted public officials breaking the law, covering it up, and finally being caught and going to prison. Cover-ups never work. No matter how you slice it, Cover-ups are painful experiences. They're not only an attempt to conceal the truth, but they're also an attempt to manipulate a situation's outcome. Cover-up attempt to rewrite truth, to change reality, but at the end, it is just isn't possible. Psalm, Psalm 85, 11 said, truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Truth will always prevail. Uh, today we celebrate the single most significant day ever. Uh, event in the history of Christianity that changed mankind's spiritual course. And even then, in the annual of history, despite the overwhelming evidence of the fulfillment of hundreds of years of prophecy, there were those who sought to conceal the facts and cover up the truth. Uh, it was a cover-up more dastardly than anyone ever mentioned and more depicable than 
we have experienced in our lifetime. According to Matthew's gospel, when Jesus was crucified, the religious leader, remember his promise that he would rise again. I'm going to repeat this. Uh, when, when, when Jesus was crucified, the religious leader remember his promise that he would rise again. It's strange that those who oppose Jesus remember his promise, but those who followed him, uh, his disciple whom he taught daily, then seem to remember those very same words. Your enemies always remember everything you say. Can I repeat that for you at the end? Your enemies always remember everything you say. That's because they hope someday to use your words to defeat you. Uh, but Jesus reminds us to love your enemies. You didn't say amen to that. Uh, Jesus reminds us to love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. That's hard, isn't it? Uh, that, that, uh, that's hard. It's not that the religious hierarchy believed Jesus' promise of a boldly resurrection. But what they did fear was a very real prospect of intervention by the Lord's disciples to effect an appearance of a resurrection. In other words, they were afraid that the disciple would steal Jesus' body and make it look like he got up from the grave. Uh, consequently, to prevent the disciples from stealing the Lord's body from his final rest, resting place, they thought, uh, in the tomb of Joseph, they asked Pilate to secure the tomb against any possible death. A great stone was rolled across the opening to seal the grave, and Pilate appointed soldiers to guard the entrance. Sooner or later, mankind will learn that there is no human security system devised a day that can stop the truth. Righteousness and the promise of God. No elaborate scheme can alter God's prophetic path. No pact of lies can bury the truth forever. No amount of wrongdoing can bury goodness and righteousness forever. No earthly power can prevent God's promise from coming forth in full time. Oh, hallelujah to his name. Towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb and in heavenly time fashion, an angel was dispatched to roll the stone from the entrance of the tomb where Jesus was buried. The scripture said, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. We ought to praise that. Uh, and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning. His raiment white as snow and for fear of him, the gods tremble and fainted. Imagine being those gods for just a moment. You work for a governor who fears an uprising of the Jews in the region. Thank you, Lord. Continue an appointment as ruler in Judea is riding on your ability to follow his order and keep a dead man body in a bar tomb in order to prevent the revolt of the Jewish hierarchy. It was a cushy appointment, an easy, albeit important task, so they thought. 
All of a sudden, the huge stone just rolls away. Thank you, Lord. There goes my appointment you had hoped for. There goes your military pension. There goes your reputation as a soldier. They could hear the taunts in their own mind. You can't even guard a dead prisoner. Hey, where's the dead guy go? What's the matter? Dead man got your tongue? No matter, no wonder they trembled and fainted. They knew they were in deep water. The women who came with spices to anoint their Lord. The Lord's dead body still as the fierce armed gods fainted in their footstep. The women stood still as the gods fainted in their footstep. And though the gods were powerfully armed and equipped with weapons of the world, they could not stand when the word of God of Christ was fulfilled and the righteousness was resurrected from the tomb. The angel spoke to the grieving women, sharing the good news that Jesus is not here. He is risen. He is risen as he said he would be. As soon as they heard it, the women did what any suffering from the conflict, emotions of grief and joy have done. They ran to tell the disciples that the Lord is risen from the dead. We ought to praise him. Or we ought to praise him. As the women went their way, some of the soldiers made haste. Not to their superior, but to the chief priest. To tell them what had happened. I guess they thought that if they could convince the chief priest that the missing body was not caught, caused by their neglect. The ramification of their punishment would not be as a fear. But the priests weren't even thinking about those poor soldiers. They were only thinking of the damage the resurrection would do to their own religious positions in the synagogue. You know, even, 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 even in all churches, there are people who think more about their position than they think about the word of God. There, 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 there are some who have been in the position for a long time and they think more about their position and they think about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. More about their position in what they call their clubhouse than they think about God's church. Thank you, Lord. So they assemble with some of their friends and plan to enter into a unified deception. Uh, we call that today a conspiracy. When, 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 when folks get together and say, here's a lie that we're going to tell. Uh, here's a lie that we're going to tell. We all know what a problem there is in Jerusalem, they said, with grave robbers. Uh, we, we have paid the soldiers and said that the body was stolen while they slept. Uh, after much discussion, they gave the soldiers church money. Can there be anything worse than using church money? Uh, as a bribe, as a bribe, uh, uh, they all agreed that if Pilate made noise about it, they would do everything in their power to keep the soldiers out of trouble. According to the scripture, 
the soldier took the money and did as they had been directed. And they must have done a good job of circulating the rumor too. Because the gospel were written around A.D. 70. And Matthew recalls that the rumor was still commonly reported among the Jews until that day. When we look at the way the chief priests lied and connived in order to destroy the truth. There were the same men of God who stooped to bribe and offer Judas 30 pieces of silver. Uh, most those who do bad things never change their stripe. From, every, from the very beginning, they plotted and schemed to alter the truth and change the reality. Uh, there is no right way, a good way ever to do wrong. Uh, I want you all to write that down, so I'm going to say it again. There's no right way, a good way, to ever do wrong. Wrongdoing involves compromise at the very outset. It means starting out on the wrong foot, which means that every other step we take will be hitting in the wrong direction. The journey of wrongdoing doesn't get any better as we go along. It just goes from bad to worse. Thank you, Lord. Instead of having open ears to hear what God was saying, uh, accepting the evidence of God's spirit and power at work in the life of Jesus the Christ, the religious leaders were instead motivated by jealousy and selfishness. Thank you, Lord. Just because you come to church does not mean that you're motivated. That you're not motivated by selfishness and jealousy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation and found themselves threatened by the very prophecy they taught in the synagogue. So they took part in the first Easter cover-up. Uh, I know you're saying, how could they do such a thing? If you have a mirror. I promised to behave myself this morning. But God told me to say that. How could they betray the very Messiah they had been waiting for? Uh, it, it wasn't that they didn't want the Messiah to come. They just didn't want him to come in their lifetime. Thank you, Lord. We all want to get to heaven, don't we? But not today. Not right now. Not on this Sunday morning. Uh, 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 it was too disruptive. It was too inconvenient. Lord, I'm not ready to go to heaven today. I got a few more things I want to do. They weren't ready to relinquish control of God's people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, it's kind of like... like how you and I feel about the rapture. Oh, it sounds great that Jesus is coming back. We lack the idea of life after death, but not right now. Not until we've lived a little bit more. Not until we've had a feel of all that this corrupt and vile life give to us. Thank you, Lord. And some Christians today are taking part in, thank you, Lord, in the cover-up. They cover up the real story about the Resurrection Sunday with bunnies and eggs. They cover up the real message with 
chocolate and marshmallow. They cover up the real meaning with new toes and new hats. Uh, but it's not about new hats. It's not about new hats. It's about a new king. It's not about sweet kindness. It's about a sweet savior. It's not about a rabbit fairy tale. It's about a lamb faith roll. So let's take the cover off the Easter message. Let pastor preach the entirety of his glory. Thank you, Lord. Let artists portray the fullness of his story. Let singers sing and proclaim the totality of his glory. Let authors express the whole of his glory. Let the poets pen the completeness of his glory. Uncover Christ's steadfastness. Uncover Christ's sympathy. Uncover his saintlessness. Uncover Christ's sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. I'm celebrating the change that took place in my life because Jesus got up from the grave. Thank you, Lord. I know I was once in a gutter, but I've been lifted up. Thank you, Lord. The prison from which I've been. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've been saved. I've been washed in his blood. I've been raised. I'm celebrating my own resurrection. Hallelujah. I've been buried with Christ and resurrected anew. I'm celebrating my relationship with a new family of God. I'm celebrating my inheritance as a child of the king. I'm celebrating my assurance of the promise of God. I'm celebrating, thank you, Lord, the blessing of life eternal in Christ. I'm celebrating living forever. Oh, I don't mind. I know sometime, sometime when we think about the goodness of God, the goodness of his son who died and got up early on Easter Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord. We don't know what to do in the greatness of that morning when Christ shall return to gather all of us. Thank you, Lord. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that Christ died for your sin? Do you believe that early on Sunday morning he got up? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Got up with all power, all power in his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, stand to your feet and praise him. Just stand to your feet and praise him. Oh, come on, come on, come on and just praise him. This is Resurrection Sunday morning. He got up. He got up. There's no cover up. He got up with all power. He got up. He's, he, he's living at the right hand of God. Jesus got up with all power. Yeah.
on and celebrate the God who got up. No matter what they tried to do to cover up, to hide the truth, he got up, and because he got up, so can you. Hallelujah for the risen Savior. As we rest on our feet this, after, this morning, church, this is a great opportunity for us to continue the celebration, to continue to share the truth, the message that Jesus rose with all power. And so as the deacons come, we're going to do what Jesus did in that moment, which is he extended an invitation for each and every one of us to come to the Father, to come into the body. He made it possible through the shed blood on Calvary so that you would not have to die in your sin, but that you can live and reign eternally with him in victory. So if you are here on this morning, and maybe you came to celebrate with family and friends. But today, today we are about our Father's business. And as Jesus was, we offer to you, Christ, oh my brother, oh my sister, if you are here today and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, today, today is the day. So why don't you come? We invite you. Come. Is there one? Come on and celebrate. Come on and give him your life. Hallelujah. We have all had to come the same way. Just say yes and step out into the aisle. You, you don't have to know how it's going to work out, but we want to introduce you to the one who can work it out for you. Jesus died for you. That was the message of Good Friday. He suffered a painful death on your behalf. But this unblemished sacrifice, he didn't stop there. No, he died and he was buried. And as the preacher let you know on this morning, early, 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 he got up with all power. So come on. Come on and let him give you the power that lets people get up from their death. Come on. Are you here?